you cannot support this kind of overhead with the one car. Mm -hmm. And we've known that for a long time. And it's not a matter of something extra. This is a matter of pure survival. Mm -hmm. John DeLorean, the charismatic former General Motors vice president, is gambling his future on the success of this luxury sports car, the DMC-12. If his company doesn't run out of gas, it will be the first new American car venture since 1925. This week on Enterprise, the startup. I'm Eric Severide, and this is one man's obsession, the DeLorean motor car. It's not exactly my speed, but John DeLorean walked away from a secure million dollar a year job at General Motors to put it together. Any new business is a high risk venture, of course. Some 450,000 businesses will be started this year. About 400,000 of them will fail. But to embark on a quarter billion dollar venture, such as a DeLorean motor car company, that means risking a fortune. The sheer complexity of so large an operation puts enormous pressure on a management team. When you start from scratch, then everything is untested and virtually everything can go wrong. Design, engineering, manufacturing, and marketing are all in delicate balance. A mistake in one area can cause paralysis in another. This week, we'll see John DeLorean and his top executives grapple with a series of problems that threaten DeLorean Motors' very survival as they attempt to build a new American car company in 1981. For a man who looks like Tyrone Power, is married to the stunning young model in the Virginia Slims and Clairol ads and earns six figures a year, John Zachary DeLorean certainly doesn't smile much. He can't. Not just yet, anyway. The reason is simple. The most important project in his life is yet to be accomplished. There will be no rest for DeLorean until he finishes doing what no one else in the history of modern business has dared attempt, to design, build, and sell his very own automobile from scratch at stake are thousands of jobs for unemployed Catholics in Belfast, the wisdom and reputation of the British government, which amid howls of protest, has bet about $106 million on this flamboyant engineer, and about another $40 million posted by several hundred U.S. car dealers and other investors, ranging from stockbrokers to Johnny Carson. John, welcome to Tracy in the Afternoon. Yeah, it's good to be here, Eric. And welcome to New Orleans. Are you enjoying our fair city? Yeah, I must say, it's very, very elegant. What I just read is a about eight, nine months old. How much of it is factual? Well, it's all grossly exaggerated, obviously. You also didn't leave me anything else to say when you got all through with it. I but, found uh, the article fascinating and your life to be fascinating. Um, the DMC-12, it's more than a dream now. It's just months away from being a reality, isn't it? Yeah, we've actually built about 14 cars in our uh, uh, operations there. We're uh, uh, starting to train our supervision and uh, we'll be in actual production in July. We'll have cars on dealer showrooms by uh, new car announcement time this fall. All right, you left General Motors uh, with, a, with a bad taste in your mouth. Oh, no, I don't uh, have a bad taste in any way. GM was very good to me. Uh, of course, uh, I rose much further than I ever thought I would in my lifetime, and I, I actually got much, a tremendous amount out of it. I was given a great number of opportunities. So I have very good feelings about General Motors, and I feel I made a significant contribution to their success also. If General Motors wanted to, could they prevent you, I mean, through internal and external pressure from producing the DMC? Oh, I would say in maybe seven or eight minutes, they could terminate our activity. They really could. <laughs> sure, they're tough. DeLorean is here for the National Car Dealers Convention. He wants to keep his dealers excited and the media intrigued. Gentlemen, if we can call the meeting to order now. I must say, I'm quite impressed with the reactions that we've been getting here at the dealer convention in New Orleans. And what I'd like to do is discuss briefly with uh, those of you that have spent some time on the floor talking to our dealers here what some of your reactions are. The one encouraging thing, as far as I was concerned, uh, was the price that the dealers felt that this car could command in the marketplace. Uh, felt it was now in a price bracket that uh, was in the region of about $30,000, which to me, as far as our business plan was concerned, uh, was very encouraging. Imagine you rubbed your hands together right. when you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt McGooder from Palm Matt, Springs, California. How you Good doing? to see you. Hey, you know, I, uh, I got 
got 44 uh, orders. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and uh, you know, you can't believe how many of those we can sell down here in Palm Springs. Uh, That's a hell of a lot for that. Uh, of course, you know, and that you're going to have to come down there and kind of rest a little bit I hope in that so. nice thing. We'll yeah, play a little golf, right? Right? All right. You look right. you know. younger every yeah. time I see you. How yeah. do you do that? Oh, no, we're going to do How'd that. How'd you beat oh, us here? Uh, Hi, John. Hi, John. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> 45 orders. Doris wants one. That's my wife. <laughs> well, she gets the last one, right? Last one, yeah. Not the first one, but the last one. <laughs> When you say low-level cereal production, how many say per month beginning uh, of We haven't finalized that yet. Um, have you decided yet what kind of a warranty is going to be available with the no, car? No, we're working on it, but it'll certainly be very competitive. For example, will there be like a service contract with a group like well, the American Warranty Corps? We're, we're looking at all of those. <laughs> Seems like you've got a lot of unanswered questions for a car that's about to go into production. No, no. No, uh, we're talking about having quite a few months here yet to resolve some of those things. Well, there's no question you've got a beautiful car there. It reminds me a lot of a Lotus, a Lotus Esprit, and I guess that's not surprising since it was designed by... No, oh, I don't think it looks like a Lotus at all. What does it remind uh, you of? Uh, it's unique. Doesn't remind me of anything that's ever been done before. Corvette or uh, Porsche? No, no. Doesn't look like any of those. Not even a bit like a yeah. Lotus? No, I, I don't see where the similarity is to Lotus. Uh, Lo Lotus is a different automobile. The basic car was done by DeLorean Motor Company in conjunction with uh, Gijara. Yeah. And the concept of the uh, gullwing doors and the stainless steel body and so on was um, originally evolved by John DeLorean, and what yeah. we have done is adapt the engineering side of it, the chassis and the suspension and uh, the details. Yeah. Uh, Lotus was hired in 1979 to engineer the car. Well, as you see, the chassis has a very Lotus-like uh, yeah. uh, design, but then this is what we understand and which we believe works well. Yeah. And it's, it's very nice to see John DeLorean uh, productionizing it and uh, producing it in such large volumes. Yeah. One week later, DeLorean visits the Lotus plant. Taking the worst case, we'll make about uh, 90 million in a normal year. And in the best case, we'll make 200 million. So it's a pretty good business. And if the sterling goes down and uh, cars sell, Even better. we'll accidentally make so much money we can't count it. What was the reaction to the paper? It was sensational. sensational. Phenomenal, really. Yeah, it's all, you know, they're just desperate to get cars now. And most of the dealers have already taken uh, Oh, somewhere between 40 and 100 orders with deposits, and they've suddenly found out that uh, one of our Houston dealers has taken uh, 102 orders with $1,000 deposits, and he's not paying any interest. Uh, he said, you really ought to delay building a car. He said, I'm making more money on the interest. <laughs> <laughs> this Pino fuel tank is really changing the way people think. They now want to make it a criminal offense for an executive, if you know that something is defective, you don't have to have passed on it, but if you didn't object to it, then that becomes a criminal offense. If, you, if you're honest about it, that's a stupid design. As you recall, in that instance, they saved a piece of sheet metal this big by using the top of the tank for the trunk floor. Absolutely. Now, by doing it that way, they also mounted the tank with just plain screws into the edge so that you also save the retaining straps. I would guess that, what, five, six dollars a car is what they saved. But everybody in the world has always been concerned about not having a separate barrier between the fuel system and the passenger car. And uh, in the end, the damage that does to Ford's integrity as a, as a uh, manufacturer and the fact that the Pinot itself is dead, is, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, when you get all through that, they didn't save, not only didn't save any money, it's going to have cost them a lot. Totally out of its proportion to any of potential saving. And you knew it when you did it. We looked at it, you know, everybody did. That was a shock to all of us in the industry. And of course, as an engineer, you got hell for it. They said, well, look at the cost study says, uh, you know, here you are building a Nova and your price is this. And look at Ford saved all this dough. Now, why don't you do that? And you know how managements are. So you had to defend yourself against it. The car must pass certified crash tests before full production can begin. 
lotus was supposed to have reached this stage months ago but most of its engineering work is far behind schedule each month of delay cost the lorien six hundred thousand dollars very very good indeed so you've got the crash crushability right at the front end good 27 inches which is what we're looking for to get the maximum deceleration inside the car and the passenger cab itself is totally undamaged we now you're going to have a mock-up of the window thing in here sometime in a week or so yeah that's, that's right, right. Yeah. Well, we really need your considered judgment on that, because if we're on the wrong track, we better do something in a hurry. That's the thing that worries me the most. As I said, the two problems I'm most concerned about are water leakage and making sure that window thing is right. The next day, John DeLorean flies to Belfast, the site of his half-finished factory. The prototype car has been flown in from New Orleans for the visit of British officials. DeLorean wants to reassure them that their $100 million investment is safe. And that is the finish now. And oh, yeah, they will yeah. all, all be like that. You won't have very That's the, truly the, representative the of what will be produced. Yes. It goes back to Henry Ford's old thing. You can have any color you want as, as, long, as long as it's, it's black. Well, as, right. yeah. as long as it's stainless, you can have any color yeah. you want. There'll be three interior colors. And what about corrosion and that without any paint protection? Over the well, the stainless is, stainless is, is totally uh, non-corrosive. Totally non In fact, we're going to offer a 25-year body warranty, which uh, we haven't told British Steel yet, but they're going to stand behind it. <laughs> we're going to explain that to them when we sign our final contract. While DeLorean tries to reassure the officials, the British press grows more skeptical. The Sunday Times. Is John Zachary DeLorean worth a 50 million pound gamble with your money? The Daily Express. Even work-hungry Ulster has doubts about the factory. It's all right. No, I think we're going to stop. Cut it just a moment. What we're asking the public today is to lift the car over and give us their evaluation. Do you have a few moments you'd like to spend with us? We're just doing an evaluation for the car company. And what it amounts to is taking a look at it and telling us what you think of various features. I'll give you both one so you're not really working together. What's that little? The overall exterior appearance ratings, which was their initial reaction to the car. 89% liked it very much or liked it. My first impression was that we got uh, the lines of the car, the overall lines of the car come out very, very good. Very high. Very, very yeah. strong. As far as, uh, but when you start getting down into the details, it uh, deteriorates. Listen, we get a, watch your head, we get a jam up here on the interior. The gullwing doors were watch not a bad styling plus. It's not the highest, but it's in the top, top six items, gullwing doors, they kind of like it. Watch your head, watch your head, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're padded for that purpose, but uh, you still don't want to keep banging. Total sample of uh, those who were given the $18,000 price for the car, 8% ended up saying that they'd definitely buy the car. When the price went to 24,000, we had 5%. When we went to the 30,000 price level, only 3%. So there's a, a, a sharp, drop off there. I think the consumers would find the price reasonable, say, at $28,000. But uh, the number of people that would buy at that price is an, uh, another story. DeLorean motor cars are looking for production foremen for their new car assembly plant at Dunmurray. We will shortly need foremen to supervise those engaged in the assembly operations and in the body press and plastics operation. Can I turn to this sheet first, please? It's the Contracts of Employment Act 1965. The terms, conditions of employment. A large proportion of you will be unemployed and you will no doubt have uh, the green slips with you from the Department of Health. Can you, in the course of the next 20 minutes or so, uh, get those filled in? And if you could write at the top of the sheet what your occupation is, uh, that will help us tie things up. 
Well, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. You all look very happy and content, but once you're in here a week or so, well, that will wipe that smile off your faces when you get to see what's in front. But kidding, seriously, we don't want to complicate matters for you here today because you've been here quite a considerable a time with the induction. Now, we are simply here to recruit you into the membership of the various unions or the true unions. Here, should we call the meeting to order? <laughs> Are there any matters arising from last month's minutes? Okay, let's move right to the managing director's report, Mr. Bennington. Nothing major in the area of site development. We are still having problems with the subcontractors on getting them out. Yeah, what's start. wrong with it, anyhow? I think it's a wet winter and they need a home. There isn't much work going on in the north of Ireland, but getting them to just tidy up the last bits and pieces is proving to be a real chore. Uh, the architect has been instructed to terminate the managing contractor and get him off-site and as many of the subcontractors as possible by 1st November. Is there a holdback in your contracts for these guys? Yes, there is a holdback. Yeah. We are retaining money on retention clause. Mm -hmm. but, uh, well, you yeah. better go ahead and do it. Yeah. We've had problems on the upper control arm. We're getting cracking of the upper control arm around the ball joint. But we also had a torsion rod failure at 41,000 cycles. Does. That's very serious. What did the failure look like? Uh, somebody at Lotus, uh, uh, some meddler, just take a look at it? They haven't come up with an opinion. It was sent off straight down break off. we got to get out of Lotus now. What are we going to do to get out of it? And we have interviews set up with additional people. we our own uh, facility somewhere now. Our principal problem is just a shortage of engineering talent at this location. Have we assigned somebody to it? No, we haven't, John. We've been discussing a joint venture with Lotus, and uh, I haven't set up anything to look at Coventry or another location that we might use. I think we should get somebody taking a look at it. Hire an outside consultant. You don't have time to do it yourself. But let's take a look. You've got all these British companies going out of business. They must have facilities coming out of their nose. We've had follow-up meetings with Volvo in an effort to resolve the pricing problem. They're still asking for a technical entrance fee. They started out at 390,000 pounds. They don't now agreed understand to... why we should pay that. Our contract is with Renault. It's been all along, and, that, uh, and it's to come out of that plant. I think this is completely, this is highway robbery. I wouldn't disagree with Now, why can't we buy the components from the suppliers themselves? Why do you have to buy them from it's Volvo? It's all Volvo tooling. Now, we put it back over in Renault's lap, and Renault disagree with us. They say it's not their responsibility. Well, that company has got to be losing its shirt making uh, engines when they're running at about 22% of their capacity. We're going to make a very significant contribution to the reduction of the overhead for every one of those guys. And I think they have to understand it from that standpoint. If they're not prepared to do that, then I think we should also make it clear that we're going to start looking for another engine source over a period of time. You know, three years from now, we'll switch to, uh, to uh, Alpha or someone else, because this is asinine. Right, lads, well, we'll declare this uh, lunchtime meeting open. And at this stage where we are, where I'm going to report to you on wages, we've tabled a claim many months ago. And I think we're just getting near the crunch time. We think that we can squeeze more out of it. We thought that after the last meeting, but alas, they only moved very slightly. If you were listening to the figures at the last meeting, they have risen now to about, to be precise, your actually annual wage increase only amounts to 6.98%. That's what your annual wage increase. As far as we were concerned on your behalf, we took the liberty of turning it down. This is asinine. We're really embarrassed with the Department of Transportation. They came to us and they said they were willing to give us three or four million dollars to do this project. And uh, in four months, we have not been able to get the information for them. That's really stupid. Go ahead. A detailed program of the right-hand drive for the UK market indications to the yard that the thing will take some 12 to 14 months. Well, why is it taking 12 to 14 months? 
to do the homologation, John. We need to modify the vehicle itself, and then we need to submit it to a series of witness tests. Now, the well, US then you got to set up to, uh, to uh, retrofit at the port of entry in order to start selling right away. We can't wait 14 months to start selling. We've got to do a hell of a lot better than that. You've got to pick the three or four big markets and go after them. You know, we're looking for <coughs> substantially more sales than we can get in North America. And uh, this is completely unacceptable. You cannot support this kind of overhead with the one car. Mm -hmm. And we've known that for a long time, and we really have got to keep this moving. No matter where we have to steal the money to do it, it's, a, it's not a matter of something extra. This is a matter of pure survival. Mm -hmm. Full production finally begins at the Belfast plant, eight months behind schedule. The company will have to build 80 cars a day if it hopes to stay in business. Some last minute details are still being worked out. See, this is yellow light. You take it out in a different light and they look entirely different. I'll pick the one you, that you think is the most logical compromise and have the whole bumper We done. need a bumper, put it on a car, and we'll take it outside right. on different conditions and look at it. What, what's the next darkest one to that that's on there? Let's see what that, that's the next darkest one? How do you feel about that? Well, I would try the other one. The one in the middle? Yeah. Is that the middle one? Yeah. That's what I would do. I'd go ahead and have one painted up that color. It destroys the whole appearance of the vehicle. Because you have so much public money in, invested in the DeLorean plant, you have been subjected to an incredible amount of scrutiny and need of criticism. How do you feel about that criticism? Well, I've got a pint of blood for every pound that the British have in it, so I don't know. I think we're all about even there. Already, in an incredibly short time, he has erected an ultra-modern, technologically sophisticated factory. But, of course, it costs a lot of borrowed money. And though it's claimed that the first 20,000 cars are pre-sold, not one has reached an intended purchaser. So the money is still going out, and none is coming in. The Belfast Telegraph. Word has leaked that the DeLorean Motor Company has told the government it needs another 10 million pounds urgently until revenue from the United States begins to flow in. It's understood that without financial help, the company would be unable to pay the wages of its workforce. You told me that that leak came out of the Department of Commerce. Well, you identified precisely, uh, you know, if you can. Is that some information that you're free to use? Or can we make the allegation without acknowledging the source? I want to go back at them a little bit. I think it's asking. I think got a problem here. Yeah, but I think we should put them on notice because here I am in the middle of this negotiation with this investment banker, and I really don't need this. You know. I need to be able to say that we have clearly defined that this leak came out of uh, the department and, you know, and so on and so on, and that, uh, you know, it really was injurious to us. I mean, you must have been aware of a certain amount of criticism in the, pe the press. Uh... Well, I think it's very much uninformed. You really, uh, most of the criticism comes from MPs who don't have enough nerve to visit Belfast, much less uh, come in and see our plan. If they saw what we were doing, uh, I think they would understand. Uh, in the end, uh, the financial arrangements we've made uh, are such that the government will get all of their money back plus a very, very substantial profit. I don't think they'll get that from British Steel or British Leyland. Oh, I said if the guy would get a, come out from hiding under his bed and see what's up there, he might find out, you know, and so on. Have all these pet slogans. Don't you fight the queen? Geneva, March 1981. At the world's largest and most prestigious auto show, a somber John DeLorean presents the first DMC-12 to come off the assembly line. Two-door coupe. It has a V6 aluminum block per hour, giving a speed performance of zero to 60 in 8.5 seconds.
During recent rioting, a petrol bomb was lobbed into a small office building at the DeLorean site. Mr. DeLorean said the factory had not been a target as such and that the incident was a chance event. Production continues despite the trouble outside. In late May, the first batch of 375 cars is ready for shipment to the United States. Against all odds, DeLorean's obsession is paying off. Despite the violence in Belfast, costly production delays, and fierce criticism from the British press and members of parliament, America's first new car company in a half century has started up. The next ship is leaving on the 23rd, and it's going to both ports. And that'll have somewhere between 350 and 400 cars. Now, in the end, my investment originally of about $4 million and then seven years of very, very hard work won't pay off for over 10 years. And at the end, of, you know, I'm going to be 64 years old by that time, so it really doesn't make a lot of difference to me. You don't do a thing like this for the money. You do it because you love doing it. By September 1981, the DeLorean company was building 80 cars a day, employing 2,400 workers, and making royalty payments to the British government. In November, it issued a general recall to correct a minor suspension problem. DeLorean now plans to sell stock to the public. The proposed offering values the company at $240 million. DeLorean's personal share, on paper, would be $120 million. This program was presented by WGBH-TV, which is solely responsible for its content.